Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're talking about Odell Beckham Jr. and asking how he went from one of the best wide receivers in the league to what he is now. Is it the injuries, the off the field stuff? What's really going on here? Make sure to like the video for the YouTube algorithm and also only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. So we all remember when OBJ was making insane catches when he was with the New York Giants. I mean, he had acrobatic catches, explosive plays, great route running, but it seems like ages ago when we last saw him play like that. Let's go back and see how we got to this point in the first place. Odell Beckham Jr. was born on November 5th, 1992 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He started in football at Isidore Newman High School in New Orleans, Louisiana. As a senior, he caught 50 receptions for 1,000 yards and 19 touchdowns while also rushing for 331 yards and 6 more touchdowns. He was an incredible athlete, of course, he was highly recruited, and he came out of high school ranked as the number 6 receiver and number 40 overall recruit in the entire nation. He considered going to Ole Miss, Nebraska, Tulane. Tulsa, but ultimately decided to take his talents to LSU and stay in his home state. As a true freshman, OBJ would play well overall, catching 41 receptions for 475 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, he played okay for a freshman. As a junior at LSU, he would team up with Jarvis Landry to make one of the best one-two punch wide receiver duos in college football. Odell would catch 59 receptions for 1,152 yards with eight touchdowns, leading him to a first-team All-SEC selection. And he won the Paul Hornig Award, which is awarded to the most versatile player in college football because he would also return 32 kickoffs for 845 more yards. So OBJ show that he could play all over the field and he was very athletic and this would lead to him deciding to declare for the 2014 NFL draft. Now going into the draft, Odell would run a 4-4-3 40-yard time and sold scouts on his abilities and he didn't shy away from contact, he was a great route runner and consistently beat coverages. Some scouts actually didn't like his height and you know there were some people saying his actual playing speed was slower than his 40-yard time but this didn't stop the New York Giants from drafting him with the 12th overall pick in the 2014 NFL draft. So how would he play at the next level? Touchdown. You have to be kidding me. That is impossible. That is absolutely impossible what he just did. After missing most of training camp in the first four games of the season, he would finally start to play. He would end up playing 12 games, catching 91 receptions for 1,305 yards and 12 touchdowns. Yes, this was him as a rookie after missing most of training camp and the first four games of the season. I mean, I think that's absolutely insane. He was better than the Giants even thought he would be and instantly became a star in the NFL. He averaged 108 yards per game as a rookie, and this season, of course, included his best catch ever play against the Dallas Cowboys where he made one of the best one-handed catches ever. After this incredible start, he would earn a Pro Bowl bid, of course, and he was named Offensive Rookie of the Year and would be voted for the cover athlete of Madden NFL 16, becoming the youngest ever player to do that. And he had one of the best rookie wide receiver seasons ever, and it's been historically pretty difficult for NFL wide receivers to do so well in their rookie seasons. In the last couple of years recently, we've seen that happening more than in the past, but still, it was really impressive and this would lead to year two in the NFL where he would go on to play 15 games this time catching 96 receptions for 1450 yards with 13 more touchdowns. He again looked like a superstar wide receiver and he was even voted as the 10th best player in the NFL top 100 list by his fellow players. It was clear that he had respect of other players and teams around the NFL and he was off to an insanely hot start to his career. This leads us to year three with the Giants where he would become the fastest player to ever reach 200 receptions in his career doing it in just 30 games. He would finally start all 16 games for the first time in his career, catching 101 receptions for 1,367 yards and 10 touchdowns. He would make his third straight Pro Bowl, of course, and was everything the Giants could ask him to be. I mean, he finally played a full season, and the Giants even made the playoffs, but they would end up losing to the Green Bay Packers 38-13 in a game where Beckham was held to just 28 yards receiving. But yet again, he was held in high regards and was ranked as the 8th best player in 2017. So this is what we were going to see from him for the next 7-10 to 10 years, right? Well, well, Eli Manning. Oh, and you can see that left ankle. Yeah, this takes us to the 2017 season where Odell would miss all but four games this season due to a leg fracture and finish with just 25 receptions for 302 yards and three touchdowns. So this was a lost year, but going into 2018, everyone thought after healing, he would go back to being one of the best wide receivers in the league. So the Giants awarded Beckham with a five-year, $95 million extension with $41 million guaranteed. The Giants wanted to have Odell long-term for the franchise and wanted to show that they were committed to him as well. They were 
pretty rewarded as OBJ would play in 12 games, catching 77 receptions for 1,052 yards and 6 touchdowns. He stayed healthy for most of the season and had a great year considering he missed much of the last season, again with that brutal injury. So things were back to normal, right? Well, not really. As despite being just 26 years old and one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, the Giants decided to trade OBJ to the Cleveland Browns for a first round pick, third round pick, and safety Jabril Peppers. According to NFL sources, it was being said he was too much of a pain in the butt, the Giants feared it would get worse, he was distracting, and they were just tired of him giving them headaches all the time. He was a big personality off the field, and it was no secret that he was really frustrated with quarterback Eli Manning, who he thought was in decline and he wanted a better quarterback. When asked if the New York Giants had a quarterback problem, he said, quote, I don't know, which is pretty bad, and even the owner said Odell should do more playing and less talking. But at the end of the day, the Giants did what they thought was best for their team, so I don't know, how would Odell do in Cleveland? Well, that's a complicated answer. Well, to some it might not be complicated, but first let's talk about year one with the Browns. He would play in 16 games, catching 74 receptions for 1,035 yards and 4 touchdowns. Playing with quarterback Baker Mayfield, he seemed a lot happier, having a younger, more fun quarterback, and he also reunited with college wide receiver teammate Jarvis Landry, so it was a perfect match made in heaven, everyone thought. But Beckham and Mayfield, despite their decent numbers in year one, had a clear lack of chemistry on on the field. I mean, it just seemed like Mayfield was pressured by Odell. I mean, Odell had some drops and again was a big off the field personality, but I don't know, maybe year two for the duo would be better. Well, not really. In 2020, he only played in seven games before suffering a torn ACL, so he would only catch 23 receptions for 319 yards and three touchdowns. After his injury, the Browns offense played better actually, and they would win their first playoff game. Mayfield seemed to play better, he was more relaxed, but I don't know, that brings us to 2021 where he would play in six games back from the injury, but he only caught 17 passes for 232 yards and no touchdowns. And again, it was just painfully clear that they had no chemistry between them. And the final straw was OBJ's father blasting Baker Mayfield on social media about OBJ being wide open and Baker not seeing him or throwing bad passes when he was open. And long story short, the Browns would just end up releasing OBJ as it was clear there was no future with OBJ and the Browns. And in a move that most people didn't see, he would sign with the Los Angeles Rams, and that brings us to present day. As of this video, he's only played one game with them, catching two receptions for 18 yards, but that was only after two days of practice, so, you know, the only time's gonna tell if going to a new team will help him get back to his old, amazing playing days. Was Baker Mayfield really the reason that OBJ didn't really succeed in Cleveland? I definitely think Matthew Stafford, with his playstyle, you know, shooting down the field, kind of high pass offense, could work out for OBJ, but again, as of this video, I've only seen them in one game, so I can't really make a determination. I think he has a lot of great years of football ahead of him. I mean, he's only 29 years old, and if he can stay healthy, I know he can still play well, but that's the big question. Can he stay healthy, and has he lost some of his speed due to these previous injuries? Let me know in the comments below if you think OBJ will be back to how he used to be, or if the injuries have ruined his career, slowed it down, or just won't be the same. I hope OBJ can play like he used to again, because he was one of the most exciting players to watch in the NFL with his crazy catches, but we'll have to wait and see. Thanks so much for watching everyone if you made it this far into the video please hit that subscribe button and like the video it helps my channel grow and make sure to hit that notification bell as always everyone i'll see you in the next one